Before we get into the episode with Lewis Vaughan, I want to let you know about Alexander Henderson Photography. Sandy's local to the Fife area and can be your photographer on your special occasions, whether that's weddings, events, corporate photography, and also offers videography, cinematography, and drone operation. Now, I've got personal experience with Sandy, so this recommendation is coming first hand. Sandy is flexible and creative with his ideas. He has years of experience and will use his expertise to get the best out of your occasion. So if you're interested in Sandy and using him for your special occasion, you could find him and his work on alexanderhenderson.co.uk And if social media is your thing, you can get him on Alexander Henderson Photography. Then your coaching badges are now? Aye, it's just started. So you've need to be networking at this but at that point, eh? I know, I can. That's what I really need to start then, Mary. Like, I've just obviously just started this. I've done a few modules the last few weeks and then started it, started it last night. I've got another session tonight. So Have you? It's only that it's the C license. So we get to skip because we've played like professional for over three years. You can skip to your C okay. license. But even then, the C license is just kind of like straightforward. Generic. It's not straightforward, no. but like. It should be a walk in the park, basically. Um, and it's not till you get your B license till you can start like taking like professional leagues and that. So, so you're twenty seven, eh? Twenty seven, I twenty eight next month. Is it is that quite early for for boys taking their coaching? <sighs> I and not. I wish I'd done it earlier, but because no. of just because of my injuries, and I think I want to start looking towards the future now. And I wish I'd done it earlier. To be fair, I wish I'd done a lot more stuff earlier, but. Uh, it's life as well as but I do wish I'd started them earlier it probably is on the course last night there was boys who were a, a, lot, a lot older than me I was probably one of the youngest when I think back actually there was one or two boys that were younger than me but I was probably one of the youngest on the course uh, well, on the course to now so. and have they all got a background in it was all pros oh, on the course aye pros. I think they have separate course, uh, separate courses for non-pros uh, but that was just that was a pro only course size, so right. everybody so knows should know what should know what they're talking about. Should oh. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't always work like that. Eh? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So how have you found it? Like doing the the coaching? It's different. Like I've I've never really I done the coaching before. I took an amateur team, one of my mates' amateur team, about three four years ago, and I loved it. It was just, it was it was a bit of a piss take to be for my mates. Like <laughs> it was for a drink on a Sunday, basically. That's what it was. Uh, amateur Sundays got my mates for school for the party at Edinburgh where I'm for. Uh, quite a rough part, so quite good footballers to be honest. It's just, ah. just want to go and play football, have a laugh, and get drunk on a Sunday afternoon. So I started my mate organised a team. And I just turned up on a Sunday and took the, took the team for two hours on a Sunday afternoon. And we played football and we ended up doing so well. We won three to four trophies and won the East of Scotland, won the league, won the League Cup, and got beaten in the Scottish Cup quarter final. Uh, it was just a step too far, and then it was only one season, um, and I loved it. I it was just brilliant. And just getting a bit older now, I I want to stay in football because I don't know what else I'll do outside the football. So I think it was just the right time to win get my coaching badge and see right. what happens because Lewis was saying that when Lewis was on he's obviously mm-hmm. what's Lewis maybe 36 and he was saying that I I mean he's been on decent money mm-hmm. for his career I don't want to talk I, about money by the way no um, but <laughs> <You're he's, there>. <laughs> <laughs> so he says I've made decent money uh-huh. but when I finish football I'm, I'm going to have to get a job I, I'm saying I wish I'd done stuff earlier with courses when I was younger but I did do a lot I've done a tiling course, I've got my level 2 and level 3 personal training course uh, certificates, I've done a basic plumbing course, obviously my dad's a builder, I've got his own company so it's probably a route that I'd probably go down if I had to, right. I've done a taxi course, I've cool. honestly done a lot but right. as I said like, you know, I, I, you need to have something to fall back on in case, especially like Lewis Stevenson was saying like, I'm going to have to work regardless of what happens now, so I just want to have something outside the football that I can fall back on if it's needed. As I said, I want to do my coaching badge and stay in the game somehow, whether that's passing my knowledge down to younger kids and coaching kids or managing the senior game. And I think I do want to 
going to be a, a, a manager somewhere. Aye. Aye, I think so. My, my opinion might change in a few years, but as I, right now, I think I would, I'd quite enjoy to be to be a manager. Stressful, but I think I'd enjoy it. What kind of characteristics do you've got that would make a successful manager? This is not a job interview. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good question. Uh, I think I'm quite level-headed. I think I can read a person well. I think I'd be a good man management just for the experiences that I've experienced in my career. You know, the stuff that I've experienced at Rafe is some people would never experience and I've experienced them in the past seven, eight years in my career. Mm. For relegations to promotions to serious injuries to scoring goals to missing chances, missing big chances and just keeping it, keeping it myself level-headed and knowing what it takes yeah. and what it takes to come back. Yeah. Tough game, the managing management game. Eh? It is, aye. Especially if for a, somebody like myself who's who needs to start at the bottom of the game to be the bottom of the management game. And if you didn't start well, you're, you're probably struggling right away. But um, I think that's about taking the right chance at the right time and no rushing into it and waiting for the right chance to come along. Like the modern game, it's no very patient with, with managers, nah. right? Nah. How many games do you think it takes for a manager to like be questioned? Like, let's say they went on a losing run. Uh-huh. What are you thinking? Like four, five, six games? In the modern game, probably. Probably. It's they didn't like, get much time at all these days. Like You see managers coming in left, right and centre getting sacked and they've not even had a transfer window yet. Look at Postacoglu. Aye. He was like riding high. Aye. He's had three defeats in a row and like there was... I was reading articles the other day and it was... Can it be someday? They were, they were questioning that. They were questioning his appointment and his tactics and... And I was like, come on. For me right now, he's one of the best managers in the world. Like a hundred percent. What he's done to Tottenham transformed him because Aye. of what had, but a bad three games doesn't make him a bad manager. Aye. Aye. Can so much so much things can happen in a game of football where it can change the game and it ultimately does lie with the manager because he's the manager. But it, sometimes it's out of his control. So being a player, uh-huh. you're coming from a player's perspective, right? Uh-huh. And you say ultimately it's the manager. He has the, all the control, but mm-hmm. players have to take responsibility as well. Eh? Yeah, I think so. I massively. Manager can only do so much. What kind of things can the manager not do that you would be kind of responsible for? I mean, you as in just like players in general, not you personally. Perform. Carry out the tasks that he's gave you. Carry out the game plan that he's gave you to go and perform. And have a bit of leadership on the pitch, I think. The manager sets the team up and tells you what he wants to do, but if you didn't go and do it, then what else can I do? If you're playing for a manager, I think it's, it's up to you to execute what the manager wants to do. And like your things like passion, determination, confidence. Uh-huh. Aggression. Those are all internal things, eh? Aye. I think, that, I think that comes from man management. I think you need to get that out of the player. I think you need to give them confidence. If a player is low on confidence, you should be able to recognise that and s- not so much sort it, but affect it in the best way you can, as in like encouragement, do stuff that he likes to do, chat. Aye, I think, I think it comes from man management. Aye. Sounds, sounds me just sitting here saying it, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got the job. <laughs> <laughs> The number one question I wanted to ask you is it Louis uh, or is it Lewis? It's Lewis, aye. It's, it's Lu- Lewis. Aye, but everybody, everybody does call me Louis or Vonnie, but right. it's Lewis, aye. I've heard not many th- people call me Lewis unless I'm getting in trouble for my missus or my mum. <laughs> it's a Sunday name, is it? Aye. <laughs> and you're fresh off a victory on Friday, a big aye. victory on Friday, yeah. Aye, massive victory in the Fife Derby, aye. Um, 3 0 at East End Park. Unbelievable night. Aye. Loved it, aye. Brilliant. Scottish Cup. Amazing. Scored my seventh goal in a five derby, so that takes me to the all time highest goal scorer in five derbies. Really? Aye. Very aye. good. I think it was Norman Haywood who was on six, and I was on six before Friday and managed to score and overtake him, so delighted to be fair. Not many people can say that. So aye. It, was a, it was a cheeky effort as well, eh? It was, aye. Aye. <laughs> I've had so many messages saying, how did the goal and they'll realise you were doing it? But I think it's for players or, who, or people who know me and knew that I was going to try it, but if you didn't know me and you'd the keeper didn't know me then mm. how does he how does he know I'm going to shoot eh? I just seen the way the ball the ball was placed right away even before he'd lined the wall up and I just f- felt confident I was like no I'm hitting it and then he lined the wall up and it was a tad to the right and I was like I can get around the side there and just I, I actually I hit it really well to be fair I connected with it well but yeah, I just died when it went in I three Rovers conspirators over this just over 20 to go a third Wraith Rovers goal we kill this tie. It's Vaughan. It's in! The magic touch from Mr. Rovers, Lewis Vaughan. The fourth round beckons. And the bragging rights are going to Kakodi again for the third time this season. 
type of things that you do when you're confident, though, eh? Aye, I was just off the cuff. It was just, I just didn't work on it. I just just seen it right away and, and fancied it. And I'm quite a confident guy, to be fair, when I'm playing. If I, if I make a mistake, I make a mistake. Uh-huh. The best in the world make, make mistakes. If you try something that doesn't come off, then you can boot me for five for five seconds after that, I'll forget about yeah. it. It is what it is. That must come with time, though. It does, I. I, I think it's, as I said, I've experienced a lot in my short, well, not my short career now, but over the past ten and a half years, I've experienced a lot, so um, I can take stuff on the chin now and it doesn't really affect me. Aye. Yeah, Probably, yeah. Come, as you said, it does definitely comes with, comes with time and experience, definitely. If I was a kid that was going through a hard time, I think I would struggle a lot more. But it does come with come with time and experience. Everybody in your pelters. Aye. It does affect players, like, definitely. Aye. 100%. People say they block it out, players block it out, and they don't notice it, but you do. And do you keep an eye on, like, social media and th- what people, fans or opponents are saying about I've you? I've got social media, aye, but I don't tend to read too much, and I don't read news articles or papers or any tweeting or that. If people tag me, I'll see it, and obviously I'll read it, but unless I've been tagged or seen it on my feed, I'll not I'll no go search or dig in there. It's not worth it. And is that something that you've just learnt over time, or...? I probably. Probably. I've never really been, what's the right word, too fussed about as I said, people, this is to me talking now, but in the future, I did care. But right now, like if people slaughter me or even give me praise, like, brilliant, aye, that's fine, but we'll see what happens next Saturday. Aye. Came up, I mean, football changes so quick. You kind of get too down, you kind of get too high, but I was certainly high on Friday night. Aye. What did you say <laughs> after the game? Uh, nothing, actually. I, I, I've, I went home, mate. I'd never really done anything. I went out on the Saturday. Saturday, I had a 30th on the Saturday night, so I saved myself for that, but I had a good night Saturday. I made sure. <laughs> made up for it, not going out after the game. There seems to be a wee bit of different energy about Wraith this year. Aye. I've heard a lot of folk asking me to ask you, uh-huh. what's different this year? Good question. I can't put my finger on it, if I'm being honest. There's so much that's changed. So much positively. The club's just went on an upward trajectory. It's crazy. From the change rooms getting done up, the stadium getting done up, quality players coming in, a bigger squad, better facilities... Sounds stupid, but better food, better lunches, just everything just went up a level. It's really uh-huh. professional, and ultimately that's why it's shown on the pitch. And what does that tell you as a player if if you're coming in like the dressing rooms look uh, mint? They're brilliant, aye, aye, they yeah. are class. Pretty much stand up. hundred percent, aye, aye. So you're coming back after the summer, and all mm-hmm. these changes are being made. Does that give you something extra? Aye, it helps. It gives you everything you need, the facilities, and it definitely helps, and it gives you that extra one or two percent, but. Me coming back for a player that's been there for so long and seen these changes, like I'm loving it because I want to go up. That's where I want to go. I've been at the club for a long time and I want to go as high as I can with the club and personally. So mm. for me seeing these changes, it's a positive thing and I'm I'm loving it. Ian Murray's made a bit of difference, eh? Aye, obviously last year, obviously at the club last year, but as you say, the difference has changed this year and it just went up a level. And he's probably, the manager's probably went up a level as well. He's dragging everyone else with him, the club's dragging everyone with him, so um, it's... Everyone's positive at the minute and hopefully it continues. You look at some of the teams in the, the Premiership and you aye. think Rovers, probably that standard, eh? I agree with you. They should be, aye. They should be there. They should be there or thereabouts, 100%. Livingston's, Kilmarnock's, like... No, equal, if no, yeah. I'm probably biased, but it's slightly better, like, aye. better stadium attendances. Yeah. I mean, it's just about getting there and getting over that final hurdle. And yeah. It's been coming, eh? I look at it as if everyone else had a shot at it. Everybody else that's been in the Champions had a shot at going up. Why not us? Why can we not go up? Because everyone else has done it. Everyone else has had a shot. So why can we not go and have a shot? Yeah. And for someone being at the club as long as you've been at the club, it'll be doing your head in that you've no, you've not got there yet, eh? Aye, you could say that. Aye. I'd love to go up the club. I'd, aye, it'd be amazing. Aye, that's the one thing that I want to do. Mm. So you'd said earlier that you're now the top scorer in the Fife Derby. Uh, I was trying to get your appearances. I was trying to get your goals so far. And I could not find it anywhere. The, the most up-to-date one was... I think it was 68 goals, 148 appearance. I might have been talking about I think it's, aye, it's a, I think I, I can find that. It's, I think it's roughly about 79 goals, 220 odd appearances, something like that roughly, but it's definitely 79 goals and all that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think it's roughly about 220 appearances, I think. Very good. Roughly in the 20s and then 79 goals. So you had a testimonial this year? Aye, testimonial year, aye. So that's obviously done not on um, appearances, done on length of, length of time at the club, is I it? think so, aye. I joined the club in January 2012, and it's it'll be 11 years in January coming, if my maths is right. Oh, that's right, is it? 
Angus twelve. I'm a year short. Eh? I think you're a year short. Aye, <laughs> aye, must be twelve. We'll go with twelve. Aye. Um. So I that'll be in January. Um. Obviously, I had a golf day. Had a testimonial dinner. And I'm just waiting to get the game organised. So. And you've the... chosen Hibs, is that right? Well, we're trying. I'm still okay. no, nothing's been announced yet. I'm trying to get Hibs eye. So hopefully that'll be announced soon. And we'll see what what happens. But nothing's been confirmed yet. So I'm still waiting for. Yeah. I mean, when when I was young and. Players getting testimonials and that. I uh-huh. just thought it, it was all older guys, eh? Aye, it is, aye. It still is. Aye. Aye. You're 27, you're in the, you're in your peak. Aye. And you're getting a testimonial, eh? Do you want to get two? <laughs> 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 no, I'm only joking, but... <laughs> aye, you're right. Aye, it's usually aye. older guys that do get testimonials and that, aye. but um, I think Ian Davidson was the last one to get one for Rafe and he was 30, 36, maybe. So you started with the Rovers, you first signed with them in 2012. Aye, so I actually played for the under-17s before that, and I only played, I think I played one or two games for the 17s, and it was John McGlynn who came and watched a under-17s game at Back 8 Sports Centre, um, and he seen me play, and then moved me up to under-20s. And I ended up, I played two or three games for under-20s, and then he offered me a full-time contract in January, when as soon as I turned 16. Turned 16 on the 19th of December, and then I signed my first professional contract in January. Uh, I, I grew, when, I, when I was a young boy growing up I played for a boys club called Inch Colts where I'm from in Edinburgh uh, a place called Inch um, and I moved to Hearts for six years left Hearts signed for Leaf boys club and I left, went to Leaf to Rafe right. and been at Rafe ever since uh, Was at, went to Hearts at a young age and was there for a long time and then when, uh, I left Hearts went back to boys club because boys in my in my school high school were enjoying football winning trophies and stuff so I just went to go and play with my mates um, took six months out and then ended up signing for Rafe and been here ever since I but just love football if I young age watched it played it and just so like jumping for under 17s to uh-huh. 20s and then pro the standard uh-huh. must have been it was massive I, I think it I think that's what developed me so quick obviously I'm quite small but that's what helped me develop so quickly and almost playing with, when I was 16 playing with under 20s can boys are 19, 20 and I'm only 16 playing with near enough men it was a big jump physically. Training with the first team day and day at men's team, it's, it definitely helped me. Like Back then, there was only three or four apprentices who trained with the first team day and day. And I loved it. I loved just being involved with men and playing first team football. Training first, not playing, but training with the first team, just I just loved it. And it's definitely helped me in my development for playing uh, competitively at such a young age. Yeah, I chucked it a deep end, but I liked it. And just for being for a rough estate in Edinburgh, I just loved getting chucked in a deep end. It just didn't bother me. Just thought it was cool. Sixteen point for under twenty. Just liked it. Eh? That's great. Yeah. Uh, That's a great mentality of like, uh, like that wee bit of adversity and being like, nah, fuck it. Uh, it probably go. doesn't help me with past injury. It probably didn't help me uh, in the long run. But just uh, as you say, that is a good thing to have. Eh? Good uh, trait to have. You've got a lot to be thankful for to John McGlynn. I yep. would imagine. Eh? Aye. What do you think he saw in you? I don't know. To be honest. <laughs> 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 Aye. Obviously, John McGlynn done. Absolute wonders for me. Went above and beyond. I gave me my first professional contract. Uh, stuck by me with, through the injuries and just gave me a platform to go and express myself. And he kind of gave me a license to just go and play the game how I wanted to go and play it and express myself. Really, played football the way I wanted to play football as well. Helped massively and just gave me all the confidence in the world. Um, having a manager that just believes in you and gives you that confidence is as we spoke to before. Some it's, it's massive. And I love my time playing with him. I owe him my whole career. If I'm being honest. You signed pro. Yeah. Your first game. So I signed in January and I made my debut at the end of the season and I think it was the beginning of May. Okay. The last game of the season I was 16 and I came on for the last two minutes against Morton at Capo. But I came on and played the last two or three minutes. Uh, at 16 it was brilliant. I, uh, I look back at photos now and I'm just a skinny wee 16 year old that <laughs> looks out of place. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> but I loved it. Can of beat your debut, it's brilliant. And it's almost just giving you that wee bit of taste to then go into the pre-season, like dangling the carrot type thing like... Aye, so I ended up that summer, um, I was on holiday with my, with my pals and my glyph actually, funny enough, and uh, I got a phone call from McGlynn saying that he was going to Hearts, so that kind of put a spanner in the works, aye, um, and he left the club, uh, you know, but I just signed my two-year apprenticeship, so football goes on, the club's still there, so Grant Murray came in and got the manager's job, so uh, he took over. So Grant Murray comes in? Aye. What changes? Does your playing time change? Uh, no, really, because I, I didn't really have any before that, um, obviously I made my debut, but... Um, Apart from that, obviously, I was just a under 20s player at the time that put training with the first team as a modern apprenticeship. Mm. I enjoyed my time under Grant Murray, to be fair. He gave me my first start that season. 
my first start debut was at home to Dundee at Starts Park. We drew nil nil, and I got man of the match. So that was a good, that was a brilliant day. I. That must be a massive confidence booster, eh? It was. I felt like I was seventeen at the time, and I just felt like that's what I had worked for for my whole life as a kid to go and play professionally. And I felt as that's my first start to go and show that. I was good enough to play at the, in this championship at that level and uh. at such a young age and people don't remember it because I never scored or that and it was a long time ago but that's to me, this day it was one of my best performances I've ever done. I, I know I didn't, I didn't score or that but people might not remember the game but for me personally I know that game I was brilliant. So then what happens? You've, you've got your first start. Do you capitalise on that? Uh, no, I found myself back at the team to be honest and I was, I was frustrated um, and it wasn't until the, towards the end of the season I started getting more minutes. I ended up playing 10 games in a row and scoring 7, 8, 9, I think it was 8 or 9 goals I scored towards the end of the season um, at 17, so it was brilliant. I enjoyed that last six, last four, three, four months of the season. Scored a few goals in that and unfortunately Grant Murray obviously lost his job at the end of that season and um, it was Ray McKinnon that came in. And because I had a, had a tasty full-time football and scored goals, I feel like the next game of the season after prison was my chance to stake my claim in, in the club and the team and be a real starter and be like a main striker basically and I was ready to come back after pre-season and do that right I'm going to go to a f- fan question Charlie Munro Uh, Grant Smith asks, mm-hmm. what has been the best derby goal that you've scored? I would have to say the third one from a hat-trick in the Scottish Cup. Okay. Just purely because it's my, it was a hat-trick and um, I'd never scored a hat-trick before. And it's such a, in this five derby, it's such a big game. I hadn't played Dunfermline in X amount of years. I can't remember the exact figure, but it was a good three or four years and the first player that's got a hat-trick in the fifth derby since 1956 so I'd have to say that last goal for the hat-trick was aye. probably up I'd put that at the top high um, another one uh, thinking about this season mm-hmm. uh, Stuart Allsop is asking what are your expectations for this season and how much are you enjoying your football this season the expectations is to finish in the top four I think we've got a good enough squad to do it good enough club to do it I think the minimum has to be top four and whatever else comes after that's a bonus. The way that we've started the season has been unbelievable. I think we've lost two games at 21. For any North Bay Rovers team, that's unbelievable. Mm. And long may it continue, I just want to go about our business quietly and see where it takes us. How much are you enjoying your football this season? Brilliant. I've, start, I've started the season well, to be fair. I've start, scored a few. I think I've, I'm on eight goals now, four assists. So I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the challenge. Um, the squad's really big it's got really good players so you need to be on your A game every game you need to perform otherwise somebody's coming out to take your jersey you know what happened to me earlier in the season I found myself at the team I uh, managed to come on and score a couple of goals and get myself back in the team so you know it's a challenge it's difficult football's a cutthroat game you need to be on your, your game all the time to keep your place in the team especially at, at Ray we have such a big squad you know there's 15, 16, 17 boys who can comfortably play in the starting 11 so um, you need to be on it every game Seventeen, I was ready to come back in, in pre-season and show what I can do throughout a full season. It must be really hard as a player that even if you're an established player, mm-hmm. a new manager comes in and it's just a clean slate all over again. Eh? Ah, you just need to prove yourself again, especially at such a young age as well. Obviously, experienced players are going to have the upper hand above a younger player. It's just the way it is sometimes. Mm. No, that's necessarily right, but um, sometimes managers tend to go with experience and no, no experience basically. Right, when Lewis Vaughan gets mentioned, obviously your goals is uh-huh. a big part of your game, being loyal to Rovers and Ro- Rovers being loyal to you, mm-hmm. but one of the big things that comes up is the injuries. Mm. The only player to ever suffer four cruciate ligament injuries, eh? I think so, aye. aye. Four? No, it's four now, aye. It's been two each side. Um, so as you said, I can't find anyone else that's done the four. I think there's a few... American footballers that maybe had it, but no European footballers or anyone European that's done it four times that I can find now. Um, and that's been since last year I last researched it, but no that I can find now. Back in the day, like one was a career. Was a, it was a career end injury. Ah, you're right. probably talking 
15 years ago now maybe 15, 20 years ago it would be a career end injury aye aye definitely so let's can we go through them aye aye, aye. Uh, so as I, as I said earlier after I scored the 9, 10 8, 9 goals whatever it was towards the end of the season when Grant Murray left the club Ray McKinnon came in in the pre-season and that's when I felt I was going to kick on and really I, I announced, announced myself as a player and have a full season under my belt score goals play every week and Ray McKinnon came in and I played the first four pre-season games and he said to me he was, I w- he was going to build a team around me. And I had a few cubs sniffing at the end of that season because I'd just ended it so well. I was only 18, I think, scoring goals. 17, 18 scoring goals. So Ray McKinnon came in, had a chat with me, blah, blah. And then I played the first game, scored, played the second game. And I just scored a penalty. And that's when I done my first knee. At home at Starch Park against Albion Rovers, I just scored a penalty. We took centre. They got the ball back. I went to turn and just felt my knee go. And that's the first injury I'd had in my whole career. So I went off the pitch, the physio was assessing me, and I thought, I, at first, I'd never had an injury before, so I didn't know what it was. I thought I'd dislocated my knee and it went back in. So I said that to the physio. So I'd done a few tests, no symptoms, like, right, let me try and go back on. So I don't remember, when if you can remember, but when Starch Park was, it had a grass pitch. It, it was kind of grass, and it had a wee lip, and it went down to gravel. So it was my first one was my right knee. So I went to step back on the pitch, and my knee just gave way. And I was, and this physio officer seen it, I was like, right, you're done, you're not going back on. So I went off, I think I went and got a scan on the Monday afternoon and the physio phoned me Tuesday and said, it's your ACL, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't have a clue. So he was, he sounded, it wasn't upset, but I could tell something wasn't right. So I said, all right, what's that? And he was like, well, it's a ligament in your knee, blah, blah. You're going to need surgery to, to repair the ruptured ACL. So then I was just like, all right, that's fine. Uh, how long? And he was like, oh, your season's done. I was like, what? And he was like, oh, so you're, you're done for the full season, you'll be back to next season. So I was 18, and he told me this news, and I hadn't had an injury before in my life, so I didn't, didn't know I'd played football my whole life, and see, when I got taken away from it, it was hard, mentally, physically, to go and into training, no train, no play, and I'd done that for 18 years. Well, it's, it was difficult to take at the time, and I didn't know, I didn't know what an ACL was, never mind an injury, so it was difficult to take at the time, 100%, and that's, to this day, I would say the, f- the first one was probably the hardest one, because it was such a shock. So he gives you the news. Uh-huh. But what do you what's, what are you thinking? You me, I'm, I've never actually told anyone this, but when he phoned me, I was I just ordered a Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> so I went down to sit down to my Chinese, and the phones went, and it was Stuart Finn the physio, and I said to my partner Demi, I was like, "There's the physio, I need to go." So he ruined my Chinese because after the, after the phone call, I couldn't eat my Chinese because I felt sick. <laughs> so the Chinese went in the bin, or she, uh, I never had anything. <laughs> Uh, but I, I just, I didn't even know what to do to be honest. My mum and dad were on holiday at the time as well, so that didn't help. So he ended up just organising the surgeon, um, organising me to go and get the surgery and stuff. And it went so quick. Like obviously, probably didn't go quick at the time, but and just I didn't realise what I was getting myself in for. To be honest, I didn't know. Like even getting the surgery and the sur- the surgeon speaking to me and that, like it was all new to me. I'd never experienced it. As I said, like that kind of sh- it was a big shock, like massive shock. So they've told you the season's over, mm-hmm. but the season's just starting. Aye, but mine's over. Aye, and I felt like that was my chance. Can I'm I'm eighteen. I've got I want to go to as high as I can at this stage. I'm feeling like foot sounding. I, I'm better. I want to go higher. Aye, I, I know I can go higher, and that just that was a killer for me. Like knowing that I'm that was my breakthrough season. That was my big season, and it was over. So I was out for the full year, and I got surgery done in Bradford. I can't remember the surgeon's name, but he had done top pros like Paul Scholes and Roy Keane, people like that. He's actually retired now. So then I came back after, missed the full season, came back after a year. By this time, Ray McKinnon had left and went to Dundee United and Gary Lock had came in. So I returned for pre-season. Gary Lock came into the club. I played the first 10 games of the season. Done all right. Scored two goals, a couple of assists. Wasn't even really myself, probably because I was short on confidence. Just came back for this injury. Probably a wee bit paranoid about my knee, see if it was right or not. Wasn't, wasn't really fit, even though I'd done a full pre-season. I just wasn't myself after coming out, having such a long time out and it being so not the norm to me. Um, so I still, I'm still playing. I ended up getting food poisoning. Um, Is it that Chinese that you? Hi, <laughs> that we ate for the year. <laughs> <laughs> it was off, off for about a week. It was pretty bad, and then came back in, lost my place in the team, couldn't get back in the team. I was coming off the bench. I was coming off the bench every game, but I wasn't a starter. And the team were, de- were doing pretty well. I think we were third, second, or third in the league. And it came to January, and I st- came to Christmas. Sorry, and I still wasn't playing. So I went and spoke to Gary Lock, the manager, and says, look, I've missed a lot of football in the past year. I'm still young. I need to play games. I can't sit about. I've missed the last year of football. I just want to play football. I'm only, I'm on 19 at this stage. I just want to play. I don't care who it's for. I just want to play football. So uh, he agreed for me to go and loan to Dumbarton in January. 
and I think Ryan Stevenson went on the way and signed for Rafe. Um, and I went to Dumbarton for the last six months of the season. When I went to Dumbarton, Dumbarton started winning and Rafe started losing. So towards the end of the season, I'd scored goals. I'd won Dumbarton, Dumbarton games, drew games. I was playing well, I was getting a few man in the matches and Rafe were toiling and Dumbarton were coming up. And I think John Hughes came in with I think two or three months to go towards the end of the season and he tried to get me back, but there was no recall on the loan. Ray fans will not thank me for mentioning this, but Ray ended up getting relegated in the playoffs. I scored the goal that kept them battering in the league. And I came back to Ray for the next game of the season and I found myself in League One, playing for Ray in League One and uh, Dumbarton stayed in the Championship. Mm. And at that time, it was hard. I didn't wish any player to experience that. I was 19, just came back from my first serious injury and I'm relegating my own club that I'm on loan for. <laughs> that I've been with since I've been 15 year old. But you're also on a high because you're playing well. I would go play with Dumbarton on a Saturday. And Dumbarton was brilliant for me, I loved it. They were part-time, so I used to go train with Dumbarton on a Tuesday, Thursday, train with Rafe on a Monday and Friday. So I'd go to play with Dumbarton. I remember scoring one game, we played Morton at home for Dumbarton. I scored 1-0 in like the 70th minute, we'd won one nil. I'm buzzing, came to train on the Monday, and the boys were fuming because they had lost, and I'm on a high because I just won. It was horrible. It wasn't it nice, and then there was a stage where experienced players and the Rafe team were phoning me saying, you need to pretend you're injured, you just need to stop playing. Really? Aye, uh, because it was between the two to get serious stays in the league or no. And it was hard for me. It was hard for me. I was, as I said, I was only 19. I wanted to play football and I was put on loan, ultimately because I wasn't good enough to play in the team. So, And it's, it was hard for me. I dare, I dare wish anyone experienced that. It was difficult. This is the problem with football. It's a team game, but it's also a very individual... It's cutthroat. It's... It is. Like, I was deemed not good enough and that's the long and short of it. And I went on loan and i done well. And You know, at the time when I went on loan, no one could foresee in the future what was going to happen because Rafe were flying in third or fourth in the league and Dumbarton were rock bottom when I went on loan. So you couldn't foresee that that would be such a, a swing. But it's like, that's football, right? it's a crazy game. Are you willing to take your shite bag if you did any challenge? Aye. Depending on what it is. <laughs> Shite bag if you deny. Um, you always hear the debate with Messi is can he do it on a cold, wet, and windy night in Stoke, right? Aye. Right. And you're thinking, where the fuck is this Aye. going? <laughs> well, you might be the top scorer in the Fife Derby. Maybe scored over 70 odd goals for Rovers and had over 200 appearances. But can you do 10 keep you up is with a floater? With a what? With a floater. What's that? <laughs> oh, a flyaway. Oh, a flyaway. A flyaway. Yeah. Uh, is that what you call him? Aye. Uh, what do you call him? A floater, eh? A flyaway, aye. I'll get a go. One of these bad boys. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if I can, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was struggling to buy one of these today. I was in Sports Direct and uh, could not find. So I went, there's a wee shop on Burnt Island High Street that uh. sells all just old <laughs> shite. Uh. <laughs> so I got myself a wee floater. So uh, the ball that kicks and it goes in any direction. By the way, how much power can you generate in a floater when you toby it? Eh? Oh, dangerous. <laughs> 10 keep you obvious. Can you do it with a floater or a flyaway? I don't know. Eh? I'll get a go, like, but. <laughs> Get a bash. If I didn't, can we say I did? <laughs> <laughs> I'll edit and make it. Right, we're going to have to move this table away. Right, let's see. Do you want me to get a go like this? Do you, you want to do it sitting down, are you? Did I get, can I try it? <laughs> or did I, am I my one chance only? <laughs> did I get one chance? I'll give you a trial run, eh? Right, one. Right. Because right. I didn't want you to do your knee and try to fucking. Nah, I'll just. Aye? I could do it sit, I think. Sit down. I think so, eh? You're going to do it with your trainers on? Aye. Huh? Let me feel it, see what it's like. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if I can do this one. I should be able to do this. Right, okay, right, 10, that's what it is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Oh, 19. <laughs> I'll take that. And you were sitting down. That's no bad, that. Fucking hell, that was no bad. That eh? was no bad. Right, I'm going to try and fucking beat you here. Right, on you go. Right. No, bear in mind that I'm not a football player. <laughs> <laughs> right. You can't get me a 19. <laughs> <laughs> right, give myself space here. Right, I'll go take these headphones off. Right, ready? Right. One, two, three, four, five, 
Fuck off. That's not bad. That's alright. What was that for? For? Fucking shame. <laughs> <laughs> So then I ended up coming back to Rafe and I found myself in League One playing for Rafe, done bonus in the Championship. Barry Smith came in as the Rafe manager, got announced, and then I played under Barry Smith and had one of my most successful seasons, if not my most successful season. I played every single game, I missed one game for suspension, too many other cards for diving. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't for tackling anyway. <laughs> played the full season, scored 27 goals I think, 15 assists, loved it, um, and we lost the league on the last day of the season, and then got beat in the playoffs. And that was probably my most successful season. Barry Smith left, John McGunn came back. And that was, that was brilliant for me. I finished that season under Barry Smith. I had to get a, a small surgery on my groin just to... It's called a groin release or something. Dr Lloyd down south done it. It was just a tied up. It was nothing major. I was back within six weeks. Back playing. And I think it was when John McGunn came in. I think it was two or three games into the season that Barry Smith had left. So then I played until Christmas with John McGunn. Scored a few goals. Was doing all right. Played in the team. Played most weeks. And then that game against Dunfermline on the 21st of January, I scored my first hat-trick in the Scottish Cup fourth round, first hat-trick against Dunfermline, and that was probably the best day of my career. And it was seven days later, I went for the best day of my career, one of the worst days of my career, a week later I had done my knee and I was in hospital for the second time. I knew what it was right away, and I'd done, because I'd done it before, I knew, I just knew what it was. But the, the hardest part for me was going from such a high seven days before to the, such a low seven days later. That was the hardest part for me. How can you go for being doing what I'd done last week to this? It doesn't. It just didn't make sense to me. So I'd done it, knew what it was, and in my head I was thinking, I don't know why I thought this, but I was like, I've done it once each side, that's me done. And it was almost a bit of relief now, I was like, it's done. I was like, one more year, I just got to the gym, doing this rehab. I was like, it's horrible, but if I get through this year, I can't do it again. That's what was going through my head at the time. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, it was obviously, oh, couldn't have been more wrong, but <laughs> that's what I was thinking. The cub stuck by me, the gun stuck by me, and, and uh, I got the surgery again from a surgeon in Glasgow. I came back again, I, I, think, I think that one was about nine months. Came back in September, October time, after doing it in the January. So then I came, I think, I, I'm sure it was eight months, came back, came on against Falkirk in a cup game, and it's like I hadn't been away. I came on and for the last 20 minutes, half an hour, and not made a couple of boys, hit a free kick, hit the crossbar, and it felt like I hadn't been away. Loved it. We had a real good team for League One. McGon had the, the boys playing unbelievable football. I played against Peterhead my first, the next game week I started, first game back against Peterhead, and scored one of the best goals I'd ever scored in my career against Peterhead. Somebody, I think, when I did, just played the ball on a channel, I was outside, outside of my right foot, and dinked the keeper for about 25 yards. Amazing. And then it was a week later that I'd done my, my knee again for the third time. So after coming back for so long, me thinking that I'm fixed and I've done it one each side I've done it my third one and I, it was at four for away and I just scored <laughs> funnily enough I just scored Damn again me. took centre went to change direction and just fell it again and at that time it was I said the first one was the hardest because it was a shot but to get my head around this one why it happened again I couldn't just couldn't I remember going off the pitch, I'm saying to McGlynn, um, that's me, I'm done, I've carried it again. I ended up leaving the game early, went, mum and dad were at the game, I just jumped in the corner, I was like, let's, 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 let's go. <clears throat> so I took a, I took time off and McGlynn had spoke to me and he was like, look, you've got two years left in your career, the club's going to stick by you, I'm going to stick by you, I'll definitely can to, to support you. He was like, anything you need, the club's here for you, I'll make sure that everything gets sorted. The club stuck by me and I went to a surgeon called Mr Keatons at Murrayfield. And it was a, a, fr a family friend of Paul Smith, the assistant manager, and he's he's been brilliant since I went and seen him for this third time. I, see, soon as, as soon as I met the surgeon, Mr. Keaton, it was the first time I'd met him, and he was just like, nothing, nothing bothered him, eh? he was just like, he was just, like I told him the story, and he just, it's just like he was an interest, not that he was an interested, that's probably the wrong word, but, ah, and he was like, don't worry, I'll fix it, he was like, this will not happen again. He was like, I'll make sure this won't happen again. So then he fixed my right one for the second time, that was the third time, but the second on the right, mm. fixed it, came back, Played, I played about seven or eight months, and I had a really successful time when I came back. McGon was still the manager, and we, ha we were back in the championship at this stage. And I was came back playing every week, scoring goals in the championship. Uh, and we got to the playoffs. We beat them firmly in the first playoff game. Scored, played Dundee in the semi-final of the playoffs. Scored, we got beat, put out 
and I, I felt like I turned a corner. And I started the next again season brilliant. We played four League Cup games. I'd scored four goals. First first league game, we were home to Hamilton. We went f- we're four 0 up. I scored two. I went off at four two by the way. <laughs> <laughs> played that and it wasn't until about I think it was next game week that I broke down in training again. That was my left knee in training. And I it was I it was a nightmare. I don't know how I got through that one if I'm being honest with you. I didn't know like the the with the last one I felt like it's, it was last resort. I was like, we've done two each side now. I had a year left on my contract. And I said to myself, the time's going to pass anyway. I was like, let's just get a go. I was like, the time's going to pass. If I didn't do this, and in nine months, a year, nine months to a year, I'm not done the rehab. I'm not even gave it a go. I could have been back playing. So I had a year left on my contract. And I was like, let's just get a go. Let's see what happens. And I did. Mm-hmm. And thankfully, I, I did. Because I'd probably be regretting it if I didn't. Retirement has to have come into your head at some point there. Eh? Aye. It has, I 100%. It's loads of times. And it still does. Not so much now because I've learned to deal with it. And as I said, as we said earlier on the podcast, like it's that mentality where sometimes I'm just a bit... I don't even think I just go on with it. Mm. And it's probably no help me in the long run, but like, as, as growing up as a kid, getting thrown at a deep end, I didn't care. Mm. I just go on with it. And whatever happened, happens. And as I said, it's probably... Kind of, it, that's life. It is what it is. Stuff happens for a reason. But um, it has, retirement has came in, a lot, in my mind a lot. Eh? Charlie Monroe! Kenny Smith asks, uh-huh. we've, we've touched on this, but when uh-huh. when your playing days are over, uh-huh. would you consider a career in psychology or support with all your experience that you've been through with injuries? Mm-hmm. How would you use that the experience that you've you've learnt over over time? I have I have actually thought about this a wee bit, and I could probably affect and help a lot of people through my experiences. No many people can have experienced what I've experienced, and in the future, if I could set up something or be involved in something that would help not even just players people in general that have been injured or people who have got problems in their life that have had setbacks I think I, I, think I would definitely think about um, helping people out yeah definitely I would never say no to helping people out. if there's anything that I can say or do or pass my experience on or pass my knowledge on that could help anyone in a positive way I would 100% consider regardless of what I'm doing as a career I would still try and help you must get anxious at times away that it's going to happen again or that. Ah, of course, it's, be, it's human nature. If I, if I didn't think about it, if I didn't worry about it happening again, it's, it wouldn't be right. But I can't think about it too much, otherwise I'll not be able to play the game. I'll not be able to play football. For me, for that through that last rehab, I didn't. I, I gave it one hundred and ten percent. I didn't cut a corner. I done everything by the book. I made sure I ticked every single box before I came back. So my conscience is clean. If I if I break down again, I've done everything in my power that I can do to make sure that I've given myself the best chance for it not to happen again. Mm. And I shout out to a guy called Cammy Ross who done my rehab. He done my last two, and they've been fine obviously ever since Touchwood. But he's he was a saving grace for me. He done it off his own back. A real top quality guy at his job and knows exactly what he's doing and made money. He's ultimately put bulletproof to be fair. And as I said, my conscious clear. I've done it. I t- ticked every box. Done it by the book. So that's why when I go and play that I've got full belief and confidence that I've done everything in my power that I can to, yeah. to give myself the best chance it will happen again. Scott Simpson asks, uh-huh. any advice to keep the mind positive when you're going through such an uh, unpleasant ordeal? So mm-hmm. what kind of things did you do to keep yourself positive? I kept myself busy. I've got a hobby, I like to play golf. So I came pretty, well I came not bad at golf, average. Um, I like to keep myself busy, go and watch the dog, keep m- my mind active. Um, I wouldn't like to sit and dwell on stuff, but it's when I started to overthink stuff. I always used to keep busy, whether that was going to the gym, going golfing, walking the dog, doing stuff with my partner, with my family. Just I used to keep busy all the time. I, I could never sit down and chill because I would just overthink. I, I'm thinking about this enough when I'm at training. Yeah. I'm trying to come back to this. Every time I go into the club, I'm, all I'm thinking about is strengthening my knee, doing the rehab for my knee. So then when I leave the club, I like to think, I like to forget, I like to, I like to stop it. And at points in my rehab, I used to sometimes go on short breaks and go on holidays. So I used to set a goal before, I used to get surgery, or I would go on holiday before the surgery, get the surgery, six weeks of the graft, 
I would have then have maybe a weekend off where I would go somewhere, forget about it, come back, next six week block, do what I have to do, get past the test, sit reset, go away, do something, go away for the weekend, come back, same again. And it kind of broke it up for me to, yeah. I've got six weeks of graft to get a break, and it would kind of like refresh for me, and I would, uh, it was just a way that I'd done it, I just felt worked for me because I got a break for it really, and it was in football, when you're a professional, it's hard to get time away and Cause kind you... of switch off because you can't. Where did I go? The, that last one there, I went to Tenerife for 10 days before the surgery. And then I went and got the surgery. And then, as I said, I'd have breaks every six weeks, four, six weeks, whenever. Kind of gave me a block. I would do the block, I'd pass the test. I'd have a weekend off to go on. I'm mostly necessarily saying I would go on holiday or go no. somewhere away. I would go a one night stay up north uh, and just no think about it for 40 hours to yeah. two days. And that's just what I felt like helped me. And then after I came back for the fourth one, it was E. Murray that was in. And the gun had left and went to Falkirk. E. Murray came in. And I had a bit of a problem with the last one. Um, I had, had, had to then go. I came back for the rehab with Cami and we started doing pitch work. And I just knew something was in the right on the towards the outside of my knee. And I ended up getting a scan and I had a, a slight tear on my meniscus, which was shown on the original scan when I first got the, the reconstruction, but um, it didn't heal. So the surgeon had to go back in and get a tidy up. Just a straightforward surgery, 46 weeks was back uh, on the pitch, so yeah, that put a bit of a spanner in the works, but none that I'd went through before, it was a walk in the park, it was nothing major for, compared to the before. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I came back, and I've been back for just over a year, two weeks ago, just over a year. It was November 2022 that you've done the last one, eh? Aye. No, you came back. No, I came back. Sorry. I came back October 22. Okay. That's when I had my first start. I think I came back a couple of weeks before that. That was my first start against Queen's Park at home, um, and I've been back ever since. So when you say rehab, what are you meaning by rehab? What's what's involved in it? To start with, to start with, right after the surgery, it's just about getting the swelling at the knee and and getting it moving again until the first two weeks after you get the stitches out, um, getting the full range of motion back, swelling it. And then it's just about getting your muscles back working again. Body weight exercises for the first four to six weeks. And after that, really cranking the weight up and getting your legs strong again. You know, you can imagine the, no using your leg for so long and uh, the shrinks. surgery that you get, it shrinks, you've, you've nothing left. So that's another reason why it takes so long to come back, building your whole leg up again. You know, it's ultimately like learning to walk again. Never mind playing football. And then it's just about building your leg up. And, you know, there's obviously different stages and I could bore you with the rehab, but it's just like your leg strengthening, you've got plyo work, you've got pitch work, you've got football work. And then ticking all these sections off bit by bit, ticking boxes for strength, ticking boxes for plyo, for movement, for football, for fitness, all these different stuff to tick boxes and there's tests that you do along the way to make sure that you're ready. And have you kept that data for before so you can compare it or? Cami had the last two, I so we compared them for the last two and they've got better every time in the last two. So Good. You've been quoted as saying that Wraith have stood by you, yeah, been very, very loyal to you and that's mm-hmm. quite hard to come by in Aye. football. What do you mean by that? For a club like Rafe to, in the Scottish Championship, I don't think there's another club that's paid for four surgeries for any player, any surgery. doesn't matter what surgery it is, any surgery. For the club to have done that, for me, is, I think it speaks volumes of the club. And I'll, ever, I'll forever love the club and be in depth with the club for looking after me for these past 10, 11 years. But at the same time, I've still had to do it as well. And I've had to stay with the club through that day times as well. Have you had clubs come in for you? Or interest for other clubs? In the past, I. Can we talk about it or...? Are you happy just to be quite general, <laughs> general about it? Uh, there wasn't. It, it was more when I was when I was younger. It was right. more like it was after the first. It was before the first knee and after the first knee was the, and especially after my first full season. The Barry Smith who had scored all the goals. There was obviously chances and clubs talking, but mm. it just never happened for whatever reason. But you know, loyalties are two way street sometimes, and we both, both looked after each other, and hopefully the club were getting the, the rewards mm. each time I came back. Yeah. See, when you're injured, what is actually the what does your day look like? Are you still mixing with the first team? And I, I'm still, I'm still on every, I'm still on every day. I so I would come into the training, go to the gym, do my rehab, and um, they go to train. A, a similar day to a player that's fit, okay. but I'm just no training, just doing different stuff. Aye, which is shite. Aye. But, but is at least you're still seeing everybody. Aye, I'm still involved in seeing everybody. And the hardest part for me was obviously travelling through the boys, just going to a home game. And if it's a big game and they've got the music on in the car, they're all buzzing, and I'm like, no fucking playing again. Aye. 
sorry for language but it's just like <laughs> it's no nice like it's no the hardest one of the hardest parts for me again was i would be in the gym rehabbing and there'd be players who would get injured on a saturday and be back playing and i would still be in the gym players would come and go i'd see about 10 different players every other week coming to the gym injured and they're back playing and i'm still sometimes players come in with two injuries and they're back and i'm still watching mm. has there been times where you've wanted to come back a lot earlier because you physically felt that you were ready but you've been held back aye definitely aye from probably Cammy the most that's held me, held, held me back obviously for mine good but there's been times where I felt like I can go ahead and be further but obviously the last two I've been more cautious because of the history but aye definitely yeah aye so the, the first time you got injured mm-hmm. done your ACL compared to now and what you've been through injuries what would you say has been the difference in terms of you mentally? A lot, I would say. I couldn't put my finger on one one thing. I feel like I'm one million times mentally stronger than I was when I was a kid. Okay. Just for the experiences that I've had. No many things will bother me. Because then in my head, I'll say, look what I've done. That's a walk in the park. That's not going to bother me compared to what I've done. And people might people who, who, who haven't experienced it might not, might not appreciate it, how, what it takes to come back. There's a young lad, Greg Young, who was at, who was at Rafe last year, and he went, he's signed for Dumbarton now. He'd done his ACL a couple of months ago now, but he just had surgery, and he was in at the club anyway. A few of the boys came in and seen, obviously, seen his knee five days after surgery, and it was, you'll not mind me saying this, but it was like a bone that was cut, stitches were still in, and they were like, is that what you've done? Four times, and I was like, aye, and they just couldn't believe it. Young lads who were obviously at the club just couldn't believe that I'd done it four times. And I think you didn't, people will not appreciate it until, not appreciate it, but understand of course what it takes to come back for one never mind four you see there's Neymar is uh, currently going through it just now he done it a few months ago and he's going through surgery just now and there's a few videos on his, on his Instagram he's also going to document it uh, a few videos on his Instagram uh, the early signs of rehab and he's, it shows how difficult it is your ACL is the main tendon eh, that holds the knee together eh? aye it's the main, main ligament of your knee sorry main ligament aye so it's almost like a an elastic band that fixes your. I'll try and make it sound simple. The bottom, the top of your shin to your knee, and it's almost like a stabilizer which just stops the knee from going forward and back. And it's the main ligament in your knee which is stability basically, um, and your balance and stops you from moving back and forward. Um, if you're a normal person, day to day life, and you've done your ACL, you wouldn't necessarily need to get it fixed. After four weeks of then you rupturing your ACL, you could run in a straight line fine, no problems. But as soon as you go to change direction, you would you wouldn't be able to do it. So that's why some people at an older age won't get their ACL rep- repaired because the amount of time and rehab and toll that it takes on your body physically and mentally is no worth it because um, you can still do day-to-day life activities without uh, an ACL. What does it actually feel like when you feel it go? It's just restricted movement. Because in my head, I'm thinking your ACL goes, it's like... No, you're right. wobbly, for, is it? Uh, you, can, you can move your knee back and forward. Oh, fuck that. Aye, so you, that's right, aye. It's almost like you can move it without any restriction. Aye, back and forward. Aye. It just feels... It, it, it's for about the first 30... Well, probably longer than that, but the first minute, it feels 45 seconds to a minute, it feels like a bomb's went... Someone shot your knee, or a bullet's went off in your knee. That's so there's what a, lot it feels pain, like. a lot of pain to start with? Lots of pain to start with. Really, really sore to start with. And then kindly just eases off. And then it's just after a minute of time, there's some swelling and uncomfortable there. And obviously, you can't really walk on it for the first four or five days, but then once it starts to settle down... You can put weight on it, walk on it freely. I was doing weights in the gym before my surgery just to get the leg as strong as you can before um, surgery. Obviously, certain exercises, it doesn't affect your leg. So you couldn't go and do a leg extension because it's obviously... But if your your foot's planted on the floor, you could do squats, leg press, exercises mm-hmm. like this without... Before the operation. Before the operation, just to make sure the stronger you go and the stronger you come out. Charlie Monroe! John Foy. Yep. 
How do you feel about being the king of Fife? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if that's something to be. What do people say this to me? To be fair, aye, aye, yeah, a few of the boys take the piss on that and say aye. it to me, but I don't even want to speak too much because there's still we still need to play in the game, game, but. No, it's all, it's all banter, yeah, I like aye. it, I'm here for it. I'll, I didn't mind it. If a shoe was on her foot, I'd be doing the same as well. Aye, aye. What kind of relationship have you got with the fans? Uh, amazing. I've, I can't thank the fans enough for sticking by me, even through the, the, the last four or five years especially. You know, you see Cubs fans tweeting saying, get rid of him, he's, he's injured, whatever, blah, blah. Not once have I seen that. It's been The fans have been brilliant to me. And, um, I think it helps that I've been in the club for so long and they see me as one of their own, really. And, you know, I can't thank them enough. I appreciate the, the, the support they've given me over the years and you know, hopefully I'm repaying them um, with some goals. Uh, another popular question that uh-huh. loads of folk have asked. Kenny Smith asked, uh, there was loads of people, uh-huh. the best player that you've played with and why? At the Rovers? Oh, there's been so many. Technically, one of the best I'd played with Rafe would be Cal Elliott. Might come a bit as a shot to some fans, but in training, technically his finishing was unbelievable. Left foot, right foot, in the box, edge of the box, volleying, half volley, brilliant. When I first came in, he was playing every week. I used to watch him, just his movement, and I used to say to myself, if that's the level that I need to get to, I'm struggling, he's, he's a top player. More recent times, players like Regan Hendry, Sam Stanton who's in the team now, um, they'd definitely be up there. I'd say they'd, they'd probably be up there for the uh, top three, yeah. What makes them so good? Uh, Regan Hendry, so composed on the ball, brilliant box-to-box midfielder, creates chances, well, his left foot's an absolute wand. Quite a similar player to Sam Stanton to be fair, chips him with some goals. Uh, Stanton's so composed on the ball, his left foot's like a wand as well. Uh, they'd, they'd, they'd definitely be in the top three uh, as well. Uh, Louise Innes is asking, mm-hmm. what's been your favourite moment of the season so far? There's been so many so far this season already. So many. Favourite moment? Any of the times beating Dunfermline? Scoring against Dunfermline. Scoring the two against Queen's Park at home. Um, that game was crazy. Find ourselves 2-1 down against 10 men. And I managed to come on and score two and win us a game. So that's probably one of the highest. Or Friday night when I scored that free kick against Dunfermline was top. That was just the way it happened. The way the fans came on the pitch. It was on the telly. It on the telly, <laughs> if that helps. <laughs> Aye, that was, that was a special night. Very and good. just scoring the goal that... Makes me all time score in the derby. I think that's that topped it off. How aware are you of like records and stuff like that? I knew that. I knew that record. I knew that I needed one more. And that's the club letting you know, or fans. The club, David, the guy who runs Rave TV, uh, David Hancock, he let me know that I needed one more to. I was equal, but I needed one more to, to to break the record and go one ahead. So I was aware of it, and it wasn't until after the game until Jamie Gollum came over to me and said, "Congrats!" And I was like, "What are you talking about?" And he told me, and I was like, oh, I forgot about it. Right. I think I was just so caught up that I'd actually forgot about it, but when he told me, it wasn't until I got him that sunk in, and I yeah, class. So, 27, uh-huh. you're hitting the peak years. Supposedly. Well, hi. <laughs> uh, what was it they say? Uh, 27, 32, 27, 31? Aye, aye. What's your ambitions for the next 10, 12 years? Play as many games as I can, score as many goals as I can, and just enjoy it. You know, whether I have three years left, five years left, however long, I just want to enjoy it, however long I have left, and see where it takes me. As, I, as we say, I am doing my coaching badge, I do want to get into coaching, it's something that I think I'll enjoy. I want to get a go. If it works, it works, it. But I, I, I want to stay in football, I want to see what where it takes me, and you know, whether that's managing at a senior team, being a coach at a senior team, or passing some knowledge on to the next generation. Whatever happens, happens, but I would like to, to try and try my luck as a manager. That's a great outlook, eh? Aye, I think so, aye. Just what happens, happens. And aye. Just What's enjoy meant it. to be, will be. Your full time? Aye. What does your week look like uh-huh. with the Rovers? So, a standard week with a game on a Saturday will be on the Monday. My week's slightly different. I don't train on a Monday. I go to the gym and do some rehab um, on a Monday. Tuesday, we train. Tuesday's kind of your, your hard session of the week. More of a fitness session. Then we have some lunch and we go to the gym in the afternoon. Uh, gym work in the afternoon. Um, Wednesday's usually our day off. Get a Wednesday off. Thursday, we come in, we train in the morning. So we usually come in for half past nine-ish, get some breakfast, start training at half past ten. We usually come in for about quarter past nine. Breakfast and then train at half ten. We sometimes we do some video analysis on a Thursday, Friday as well. Um, we train Thursday morning and then we have some lunch and then go to the gym in the afternoon on Thursday as well. And then Friday morning is nice and short and sharp before the game. We do some analysis, some training. 
and then some shape and walkthrough for the game on the Saturday and then uh, we're off home to, to rest up and get an afternoon sleep for the game on the Saturday. For a, a home game we usually report for about one o'clock-ish um, for a three o'clock kick-off. Obviously it can vary depending on if, if it's a Friday night game or a, or a Saturday night game or Saturday lunchtime, whatever, it just varies. But standard week, Saturday three o'clock, that's standard week and uh, Sunday off. If we have a game on the Tuesday, we're usually in the Sunday for recovery, just to do a, a stretch and recovery and see the physio and injuries mm. and stuff, but um, that's what a standard week's like. And your Monday session, you said it was rehab, and that's just mm-hmm. to, almost like just keeping an eye on your type. Aye, uh, just to take over, give me an extra day recovery if I play on the Saturday, just to do my rehab in the gym, just to make sure that I'm keeping my legs strong and uh, my knees all good, um, looking after this. It's probably pretty standard, to be fair, a lot of players do do it if they've had, or if they're older players or had a, had a few few injuries, so mm. um, it's normal for players to to do that on a Monday. And you're training, uh, you train at Starks, obviously. We train at Starks, aye. Train at Starks. Yeah. Breakfast and lunch you have it at Starks as well. Aye, aye, that's obviously been brought in this year. It's went up a, up a notch, the breakfast and lunch. It's Come good on, tell, standard. Us, tell us what you're having. What we're having. What do we have today? This morning I had, ah, sounds rubbish and boring, but I had scrambled egg on toast with some brown sauce. I had a coffee. I've got a coffee machine that's brilliant, by the way. Is it? Ah, it's good, like, good coffee. Be shiting five minutes later. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, had a coffee and then this afternoon we had... Uh, chicken lasagna, it was really nice. Ooh, was chicken nice. lasagna. Uh, a wee bit of garlic bread on the side. <sighs> Very good. Yeah, we had to have a soup there as well. What was it the day? I never had any soup the day. Potato and leek it was the day. So the day I had the lasagna, I had a strawberry yogurt and a cup of dilutant juice. And I had a coffee on the way over. Perfect. I know, not bad. It's all right, yeah. Aye. And the gym, I'm guessing... We use gym 64. 64. Aye, aye, use gym 64. So it's decent setups, decent... You enjoy aye. the gym? I I I I've learnt to enjoy the gym. I'm kind of superstitious. I need to get my gym sessions in, otherwise I don't feel right. I need to know that I have ticked it off and done it right for me on a Saturday, so that I know I can go into the as I say go into the game with my conscience free, knowing that I've done everything that I can for a Saturday. Thinking about all the managers that you played with, mm-hmm. uh, who's the manager that you've kind of felt that got the best at you? I'd have, I'd have to say John McGowan, definitely. The way that has he set his teams up, the way that he played the game, I believe is the the right way to play the game. Suited my style of play to a tee. Barry Smith, I enjoyed my time under him. Um, I think that was my... I played the full season under Barry Smith. I think that was my best goal return in a season. So um, I'd say John McGlynn and then just underneath Barry Smith. So when you say that John McGlynn, in terms of the way that he played football and things like that, what do you yeah. mean by it? What do you mean by that? Playing it for the back, passing the ball, playing through the lines, getting players to play in pockets and possession-based game, basically. And just the way he set up the team to play is the way I, I would... It just benefited me the way I play. Obviously quite a small player, technical... I like to get on the ball and make stuff happen the way he managed the team suited me. And what characteristics would you say a manager suits you as a player? A manager who demands for me, I, I would say, gets the best out of me. Who always puts demands on me. And under a wee bit of pressure, I think that's when I like big games. I like to play in, obviously, a lot more pressure in big games. Um, somebody who demands stuff, demands, I would say, puts demands on you, gets the best out of me. And asks a lot, that means I, I want to show them that I can date if they demand it for me. Um, I'd say that's how you get the best out of me. So when you were dropped earlier on in the season, yeah, are you thinking right? What can I improve on? Because some players would sit there and feel sorry for themselves. Aye. How do you evaluate like the situation? Are you going to the manager and asking why? Are you having conversations in your own head like right? I need to improve this. What? How? What's your thought process? It. I do. I I I, just, I want to know the reasons why. Obviously, as a player, and just have a conversation with the manager and see what it comes for. And you know, I'm not right. The manager made the right decision because we went and won the game. Hmm. But I, I just wanted to know the reason why and if I can do anything better or something. But it makes me angry. It makes me want to show that I should be playing. And um, I was with the team and then two weeks later I got my chance to come on and score two and, make, and score in the last minute to win the game 3-2. So it made me want to show that I, sh- I should be playing. You've got to be resilient, eh? You have to be, yeah. You need to be mentally strong in, the, in football. There's no two ways about it. You need to be resilient. You need to take everything with a pinch of salt. And, you know, it is a tough game. People see it for the good stuff that you see on 90 minutes on a Saturday, but there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that you need to deal with mentally and physically during the week, after the game, before the game. You know, you get beat on a Saturday, I'm thinking about till the next game game. Okay, what I mean? You know, you try and get out your head, but you're still thinking about how you performed until the next game game. If you could pick anywhere in the world to go and play, what would it, where would it be? Anywhere. What a question that is. Right now, to go to the morn. <laughs> Orlando City, aye. That's where Kaka went, eh? Aye, first reason because I love Florida, <laughs> been a few times, second reason, MLS game is a lot more, American games a lot more chilled, 
I think it would suit me, and just to experience the lifestyle in Florida. You got engaged there, eh? Aye, aye, that's right, aye. Is that what you proposed? Aye. Doesn't it work, aye. eh? Aye, aye, so I, I like Florida, like. How did you how did you do the deed? I shot it the first day, if I'm being honest. <laughs> <laughs> Patched it to the end of the holiday. And I was like, oh shit, I'm going to need to do Is this right? now. Aye. Left uh, it to the end. Left it to the end. I was meant to do it the first day and shot it. Shite baggy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've done your challenge and uh, shot it before. <laughs> Aye. I was yeah, waiting until it was a bit more quiet, like, but. Did you? Aye, uh, waiting until it was about evening time. I bet you still got some Raj Americans though, yeah? Ah, uh, aye. Go, dude! <laughs> <laughs> Well, I want to thank you for your time, bud. No worries, I appreciate I've thoroughly enjoyed that. It was Aye, good. Uh, good laugh. I really appreciate it and uh, taking your time out to come.